Most ham radio operators need a mast to support an area of some form. And in the past, it was a bit of a puzzle really because there wasn't much in the way of options. Two inch alloy masts with joiners were the norm. But today, we've got a wider selection. So let me take a look at some of the options which may help you decide which is the best way to support your antenna or perhaps what is the best choice of mast to support your antenna in a typical urban situation. Welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. We're going to look at three support options when it comes to supporting antennas. As we're not too far away from spring now, some of you may be thinking about putting masts up in the garden. And there are three types of masts that we do, which may interest you. Different applications, but uh, let me run through the three basic choices very briefly. A popular choice is the fiberglass mast. This is one here I've got in the garden. And they go up very high. You just pull them out a bit and they sort of self-jam. And you go up higher and higher and higher, just like that. Way up in the air. The advantage is they're light, they're easy to erect, easy to take down. Uh, disadvantage? Well, none really, apart from the fact that if you're going to use it permanently in the garden, then I would suggest you put hose clamps just above each section so it doesn't slide back. And remember that its strength is in a downward motion. It's not so strong like that. And I, I normally take the top section out to give it greater rigidity. So if you're going to support something with a sort of strain in that direction, bear in mind that it will bend a bit. It'll hold, but it will bend, so I always take the top section out, and that gives it more stability. I've got here one of the metal telescopic masts, and uh, it's done up in uh, <laughs> plastic, which I'll... Uh, actually, if I tighten this, it's, what's happened is one of the screws has been uh, loosened. Therefore, I can't get it out of the packet. Take it down a bit further. Watch. Oh, I see what's happened. One of the uh, screws has come out. Right. That should make it easier now. Let's put that screw back in there. These are masks are held together with um, these bolts. Quite a good idea, actually. But uh, uh, it's for portal work it's fine, but I would think for um, uh, permanent work you need to put some hose clamps around for more permanent locking. And you need to place the hose clamp uh, just above where the uh, telescopic section telescopes back in, basically to stop it slipping down. You're not using it to clamp, you're using it to stop this section from slipping down. So hose clamp just above the point where the mask goes into the, uh, the actual clamp here and that will stop it slipping down. I don't think there's any stops on this. Oh, there was a, there was a mark. There was a mark. It's a stop mark. So this I think goes up quite high. How many sections? We've got one, two, three, four, five sections. Probably goes up to around about uh, one, two, three, four, oh, five, six sections. So this, this goes up to 30 feet, I think. So that's the first six, section out. Let's see if they're all marked. It makes sense if they are marked, because otherwise you could have a, yes, they're, they're all marked. They're all marked. Uh, so what are we up to now? It's actually fairly light. Just looking for the mark, they don't want to be caught out. There's the mark, yep, they're all marked. So, uh, but I would feel happier with hose clamps um, to hold them in place. But I mean, for portal work, it's okay. Let's take this down the garden so you can see 
a bit better. And uh, we've got how many? We've got uh, two more sections to come out. Uh, so that's uh, that's pretty good. And certainly at this height, it's very manageable. <clears throat> I'm not the strongest person at this age, but I could manage that okay. We can go up one more, which I think will take us up to about 26 or 27 feet. <laughs> Just looking for this wretched mark. Oh dear, living dangerously here. I haven't quite come to the mark, but I think I've almost come to it. I'm not going to go any more. So there we are, that's about, that's around about 25, 26 feet. And I can push that up and down okay yep quite happy with that one more to go um, I'll try and remember to measure the diameter I think that's two inch it's almost two inch I think which would be ideal for uh, clamping in place and I think I think you could use this um, certainly semi-permanent but uh, as I say I would want hose clamp I uh, want um, Hose clamps on there. Usually it's called jubilee clamps, don't we? I want hose clamps on there uh, just to make doubly sure. And uh, have to be careful with these things that you don't trap uh, your fingers in them because you do trap your fingers in them. It tends to last into your memory, quite apart from the scars. But I'm glad that they have marked this, the thing. And also, let's come back to the camera and you can see that. Um, they've also put a plastic stopper there. Because believe it or not, when it rains, I know I've done this before, it's amazing the amount of water that gets uh, in there. So uh, that's, uh, that's a good point. I've measured the base and it's just two inches so they'll be ideal for there's plenty of clamps around that's clamped two inches and the top section seems to be just a just a smidge under one inch so that's not bad you could certainly put a lightweight Yagi on there um, I think this would be ideal for an inverted V antenna I actually may cover a video sometime on inverted V antennas because it's quite interesting but this would be okay for an inverted V and uh, at 30 feet uh, you'd certainly be able to uh, erect a 40 meter uh, inverted V on this uh, mast. As I say it's alloy and oh by the way the the end there the bottom is well plugged so the um, tubes aren't going to fall out the bottom either which is quite nice it's uh, it's quite a nice unit actually. Um, as I say, if you're going to use it extensively and certainly with, I don't know, perhaps you put a Yagi on top. Well, you, you could put a, uh, I'll tell you what you could do actually. Um, you could actually put a uh, two meter or dual band vertical on here, five blast vertical, that would work quite well, I think. And uh, if you've got one of these, um, if you're out portable, you've got one of these units where you drive the car tire or wheel onto the base and this slots in that would work quite well as well so I think for portable use it's going to be quite good uh, how tall is it well I'm just over six foot I'm six foot two inches so this is less than six foot um, you probably won't go in the boot of your average car but uh, most cars are hatchback and the seats fold down so you'd certainly get into a car okay I think uh, in fact this is how we got it back here actually from the shop uh, got a, a small hatchback car and it went in there very easily so um, metal alloy mast six sections tele telescopes up to uh, 30 foot or so just under one inch diameter at the top two inches diameter base it's got a lot of applications so there we are and I'll put a link below this video to this mast I think we do some other ones as well in the same range anyway I'll put I'll put a link so you can find out now here's an alternative for uh, a fiberglass telescopic mast. I really like these actually. Um, I'll tell you for why in a minute. This uh, is, so is it one, two, three, four, is it five sections? It's one section. Is that where we are? Oh, no, I'm not sure about that. So look, one, two. Oh, <coughs> this is a four section mast. So we do bigger ones, but this is a four section. So this will go up to around about 22 feet, I think. 
Uh, the bottom section is uh, just a smidge under two inches, so you could use a two inch clamp for that. It's uh, got a stop at the bottom, so nothing's going to fall out the bottom. Hasn't got anything at the top, unfortunately, so you need to put something over that, a bit of um, I don't know, tape or something like that, um, just to stop the water ingress if you're going to use it as permanent insulation. Now, this does work quite well as a permanent installation, and I'll tell you for why. First of all, it's very nicely made, and secondly, these, I really like these. I didn't get this one. Ugh. This is new out the bag. Ugh. I'll just get it fully out there. Right, there we go. Um, and these have got stops on. I'll pull this out, and it's going to come to a stop. I'm very confident yeah, well, it's come to a stop. I like these because you've got this clamp, and this clamp is very firm. Once that's put down there, that's going to, not going to slide anywhere. And you can actually put it halfway, or, you know, not all the way out, and it will still clamp in. The top section is just a smidge under one inch, so you could easily put a lightweight Yarg on there. I'm not sure I'd want to put a rotator on there, but you could certainly put a lightweight Yarg on there, turning around from the base. Um, you could certainly put the dual band vertical on there as well. So that's one section. I haven't actually opened the shell, that comes out fairly well. Oh, it's good exercise. There we are. It's two sections. I'll go a bit further away from the camera so you can see. Um, here we are, that's... Uh, this is the final section, I think. Yep. Whoa. There we are. That's about 22 feet, something like that. That's very manageable. I'll take it down the garden so you can see a bit further. I think you should be able to see the whole of the antenna now. And uh, very easy to put up in the air and take down. Not that you're likely to do that really because it's telescopic, but uh, if need be, um, that's not a bad height actually, about 22 feet. And a lot of gardens again. Inverted V antenna. Um, be careful when you put it down. But again, an inverted V antenna. Uh, certainly if the HF band's 20 and so forth, what have you. Um, sometimes you can use these to support the centre of dipole, because you know a dipole always sags, doesn't it? So you could always use this to support the centre of a dipole. Um, as I say, this is a 20, oh, it's just over 20 foot tall, ideal for portal work, but we do do, I think we do a 30 foot one. Again, I'll put a link in the, um, or underneath this video so you can have a look. And uh, it's a nice uh, fibre of pole. Now, there are some cheap ones. There are some cheap ones. Don't be fooled. Um, these ones are lovely. And uh, you can put it, you leave it outside. If you're going to leave it outside, I'd actually, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd put cling film around it. Because I found cling film lasts for ages. But anyway, something there just to, just to seal it. Because what actually happens is when it weathers, you start to get a bit of grime there. And sometimes when you try to telescope it down, you've got to put a bit of pressure on it, which you don't really want to do. So I, I always like to put something around there to keep, keep things nice and clean so that uh, when you want to uh, adjust it, take it down or do something else with it, you've got some nice clean um, sort of uh, locks there to play around with. So that's the fiberglass pole, fiberglass telescopic pole. Not to be confused with the, um, the, the uh, other telescopic pole I started this video with, which is much more lightweight. But there we are. That's uh, your third option for supporting an antenna. Now when it comes to guy ropes and uh, means of hauling antennas up, you need some sort of rope or cord. I use these um, Mastrant uh, products. They are very strong, they are weatherproof, they won't be affected by sunlight, and I've been using this over the last few years with no problem at all. They come in various sizes and various size reels, 100 meter reel, 200 meter reel, and uh, I think that uh, 
a couple of these reels and you'll be set up for quite a few years. Uh, and it's reusable because um, some of the rope I've used in the past, you take it down, you think, oh, it needs to be replaced. But I've, uh, re I've used some of this uh, rope, taken it down, used it for other purposes, and it doesn't seem to be affected by weather at all. So that's called Mastrant, and I'll put a link below our website so you can take a further look. We also do pulleys and we do all sorts of uh, bits and pieces for guy rope. So take a look. So how are we going to support these uh, masts? Well, my favourite method is to get a bit of angle iron, which you can order on uh, the internet. Get a bit of angle iron, stick it into the ground with uh, concrete, get uh, post concrete, which is pretty quick setting, and the bottom section of the mast will nestle quite nicely into the 90 degree angle of the angle iron. And then you can fasten that in place any, uh, any way you like. Uh, I tend to favour uh, hose clamps. Hose clamps seem to work well. And one or two people said, oh, well, you shouldn't use those, they're, they're rust. I've had some hose clamps now, they're about four years old. But what I do, I replace them once every two years, just check them out. But they will uh, hold the mast in place and uh, it works extremely well. You may have better ideas, but as I say, I've found that the easiest way is a bit of angle iron um, in the ground and the bottom of the mast nestles quite nicely in the 90 degree angle formed by that angle iron. On the TMF range, the heavy duty fiberglass masts, we do lengths of 20, 30, 40 and 50 feet. And if you go onto our website, they'll give you the dimensions of the smallest section at the top, the largest section at the bottom and the overall length of each section. So check that out. The LMA series of metal masts, which I covered in this video, have three sizes, 17 foot, 26 foot and 33 foot. And we also carry all the plastic spare parts. So if you have anything that needs replacing, you can be sure that we've got spare parts for them. So great value. Also check out the spider masts that we do. These are metal masts made in Germany. They're really hunky masts. And uh, We've got several sizes, so check out spider masts also on our website. So there we are, another video. Thanks for your support on this channel, it's much appreciated, and um, also thanks for your support at the shop. Uh, I've got some portable antennas I'm going to uh, take a look at. At the moment it's starting to drizzle with rain, so I hope the camera lens has kept fairly clear. Um, but. Uh, Although it's raining, it's still fairly mild, actually. Although I think they've got they've got snow in the north of England, uh, so there we are. Anyway, thank you for your support on this channel. You take care, and as usual, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.